Hello, Steve Coffin here, and today I'm going to be talking to Mori Tetu. Well, I'm going to be talking to Tetsia of Mori Tetu 2 English Channel. Remember, if you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, click on the bell for notifications, and if you follow me on a podcast service, please leave a comment. We appreciate it. Okay, so Tetsuya, welcome to my channel. Hello there. Thank you for having me. All right, so I'll, I'll make a brief introduction and then maybe you can provide more information. Okay. But I know from personal experience that a lot of people in Japan are interested in learning English. And a big part of that is that there is an obligation uh, from employers, from uh, educational institutions in Japan or elsewhere, that, that the Japanese people have to achieve a certain level in TOEIC or sometimes in TOEFL. And I think that is a big part of the English learning environment in Japan. Can you tell us a little about your channel mm -hmm. and the whole English learning situation in Japan with specific reference to these tests? Okay, yeah. So as I told you, uh, my, my channel is called Moritetu English Channel and then the intended mm -hmm. audience uh, the people who want to take the TOEIC test or entrance exams are like Japanese prestigious universities. Yeah. Mm hmm And uh, yeah, since so these are stu yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So since you know yeah. English tests are really important in Japan, so that's why I right. teach um, test taking strategies, or uh, you know sometimes right. I I tell them how to study English. So. To do well on TOEIC, I presume there are two components. There is right. actually improving your level in the language, mm -hmm. uh, vocabulary, grammar, whatever. And then right. the other is understanding, you know, having a strategy on how to do well in the exams. Yeah, Can so you share like, with us some of the strategies mm -hmm. for improving English and some of the strategies right. for doing well in the exam? Okay. So basically, yeah, to get a good score, yeah, of course you have to improve your English level, right? Uh, like up to a certain level, but uh, mm -hmm. even native speakers cannot get the perfect score easily, because right. yeah, because they have yeah, especially the reading part, you have to find mm -hmm. like several pieces of information, you know, so you can't just right. answer quickly, yeah, all the questions. So that's the yeah one part of the like one really difficult part of the test. Mm -hmm. And then so, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead. So you gather uh, several pieces of information and you have to figure out the synonyms or yeah, so like the synonyms are really, really important. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of, you know, finding bits of information in a text, for example, whether mm -hmm. you're reading or listening, right. but especially if you're reading, I would imagine the ability to read fast mm -hmm. is important because right. you may have to read more than once the same text before you find whatever information they're mm -hmm. looking for. Right. Actually, yeah. Actually, most people cannot finish this test. Yeah, because mm -hmm. it's yeah you have to read yeah a bunch of <laughs> yeah long texts and um, but right. so so basically I recommend people uh, try to find the necessary information, not try to read uh, all of the passages. Mm -hmm. so, oh, see, so it's a strategy of sort of skimming the text in order to zoom in on specific bits of information so right. that you can answer the question. All right. And so yeah. you, what, you teach, you teach a technique for doing that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of. And then skimming and the, uh, scanning are really important. And uh, that's what mm -hmm. ETS uh, the people who make the test think, but mm -hmm. okay. the problem is we don't learn that in Japan. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, okay. It's, we just analyze the sentence structure and then read, right. read the sentence uh, and then, then translate the sentence into Japanese. So of course mm -hmm. it is very time consuming. So that's why most Japanese people cannot finish this test. Okay, but to be fair, when you are reading in a foreign language, it's a lot more difficult to skim mm -hmm. and, and find, you know, important bits of information. When you're reading in your own language, it's like instant meaning. I mean, right. I can look at a paragraph of English and mm -hmm. I, I see it all. 
Right. If I'm learning, if I'm in another language, I'm kind of going word for word for word to try and figure out what it means. Mm -hmm. It's not fair to expect the non-native speaker to have the same ability to skim or scan as right. the native speaker. It doesn't right. matter what the language is. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's right. Yeah, you can say that, but <laughs> <laughs> but what what they say it's is tough. like like the test. Oh, so the basically TOEIC tests your ability to live in the English-speaking country. Yeah, oh, bas okay. basically the United States and then, yeah, maybe in other English-speaking countries such as UK, mm -hmm. yeah, Australia. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. what they ask us to do, just like native speakers. But, right. of, course, of course, that's really, really difficult for non-native mm -hmm. speakers. Right. It's, it, it doesn't matter whether it's a Japanese person learning English or an English speaker learning Japanese. Right. It's the same. Mm -hmm. Reading in another writing system, reading in another language, it, it's, not, it's not that instant meaning that it mm -hmm. is in, in your own language, unless you have had so much exposure to the language. And mm -hmm. I get back to my favorite theme of lots of listening and reading so that right, right, right. while the native speaker has had millions and millions of hours of listening to the language, whether it be in Japanese or English, mm -hmm. And reading so you as a learner you haven't had that exposure but the more exposure you have the closer you get to the level of the native right, exactly. speaker I guess right and the problem is that you know the test is getting harder and harder because mm -hmm. you know a lot of test takers learn like useful test taking strategies and they mm -hmm. get get good scores and then the test will become harder. <laughs> right. Yeah. One of the things, if you don't mind me, me saying so, I've always found it strange that in Japan, people take TOEIC a lot. They take it off and they take it three, four, five times. Mm -hmm. And when I last looked at it, it seemed like for most universities or for employment, you need quite a high score, mm -hmm. which like over 700 or, or right. something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so if you test and you would get only 350 or mm -hmm. 400 that's almost kind of useless right so my question has always been why wouldn't a person wait until they are confident that they have a fairly decent level in the language before taking the test why take the test to confirm that your level is low right. uh, you know if, if I were a Japanese person I wouldn't take the test until I was fairly confident that I would have at least 750 mm -hmm. but a lot of people in Japan end up with like 300 400 and they take the test over and over again and they get 300, 400. Why mm -hmm. not wait until you know you're going to get 750? Mm -hmm. Or is that not realistic? I don't know. I think the issue is motivation. Motivation, like if we don't have tests, we don't study. Right. So. Uh, okay, that's the problem. <laughs> yeah. So they study for the test. Yeah, exactly. So that's kind of sad. Yeah, you yeah. know, TOEIC, <laughs> yeah, TOEIC stands for Test of English for International Communication. But <laughs> right, but yeah. In fact, yeah, we just study for TOEIC, you know, so which has only so the, listening and reading. Yeah. So the average person mm -hmm. who takes TOEIC and takes it quite a few times, like, do most of them eventually improve up to a level of seven fifty eight hundred, or do most of them kind of stay at that four hundred four hundred and fifty level? Uh, it depends on the person, but like, if mm -hmm. the person likes the test, you know, if if the person mm -hmm. is into the test, yeah, of course their score usually yeah, improves a lot. But like right. if you don't like English or a test, <laughs> you know, of course they just stay, yeah, remain the same. Right. Or so, like so it's as much mm -hmm. a man yeah. Oh, so it's like once they get the you know, the their uh score, like satisfactory score, yeah, most people right. yeah, basically quit studying English. So of course, oh, their level okay, will go right. down again. So what's that minimum level that they need in order to not have to take the test again? Uh, it depends on the requirements of the university mm -hmm. or uh, mm -hmm. the, the companies. Yeah, but usually right. and, and in universities, like many, uh, many of them um, ask their students to get uh, over 600. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I mean, 600 isn't bad, yeah. uh, but I guess the reality is if they're not motivated to learn English, 
then they're just going to get a minimum in the test and then they, they drop English. Mm -hmm. so yeah. That, that is a problem. So uh, language learning still comes back to motivation. If you have a Japanese person who's really motivated to learn English, follows, you know, American TV programs, reads books, listens mm -hmm. to audiobooks, is totally into it, has friends in English. Right. They're going to do well with no strategy. They'll still right, 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 right. Maybe they can, they can benefit with some test taking strategy, but mm -hmm. if they have that kind of a base in the language, mm -hmm. they will do well, right? Right. Yeah, that's the kind of sad part. A lot of Japanese people want to communicate with native speakers, you know, of English. Right. But uh, in reality, they don't have opportunity to use English. And so, right. like, basically English tests are their only motivation to keep studying English. Right. I mean, I mean it depends on the point. person, but, yeah. Because, like, even though we yeah, have, yeah. like, online uh, English conversation applications or services, you know, most people right. just quit studying English. Right. Yeah, yeah. I can understand that. So how did you develop your interest in English? How did you achieve the level that you have in English? Because your English is very good. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Basically, so I studied English for the entrance exams of a university. Mm -hmm. And so I right. got into Keio University. So one of the best private mm -hmm. universities wow. in prestigious. Japan. Prestigious. Yes. Yeah, prestigious. Yeah. And then, so I majored in yeah, English and American literature. I wanted to be mm -hmm. an English teacher. So that's what, <laughs> okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then, but uh, once I got into the major, so I realized that there are a lot of like native speakers of English were like uh, at least like native level and then I, I was like oh my gosh I learned a lot of grammar but I can't speak <laughs> what right. should I do then I decided to study abroad and then so mm -hmm. I studied abroad in San Diego and where I oh, met oh wow that's yeah, a nice place yeah where I met our uh, an American girlfriend <laughs> oh wow yeah. that helps yeah. that's a big advantage yeah yes. oh yeah that's right yeah that helped a lot i would yeah. say so right. yeah so we were together for like almost wait five years so that's my why goodness I, yeah. yeah lots of opportunity right uh yeah so and but even to be studying english or american literature at university th you're doing those texts in the original presumably you're not doing translations right 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 exactly yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you're you're engaged with the culture, you're engaged with the literature, you're engaged with the language. I mean, that's a, a tremendous start. Mm -hmm. And then to have a, a, a relationship, you right. know, w w with someone for five years. I mean, mm -hmm. that's a, again. A, a, I hope she wasn't studying Japanese. <laughs> oh <laughs> man, she she was. Yeah, yeah, she was studying Japanese, or so she complained a lot. It's like, speak Japanese. Oh, sure. <laughs> I know. Yeah. So um, you have to compromise sometimes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. So then, so while I was in San Diego, I got interested in cognitive linguistics. Right. And then so I finished my thesis and uh, I moved on to the University of Tokyo. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Then okay. I, where, where I yeah. studied linguistics. And then mm -hmm. after that, wow. so I went to the States. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. in order to get married to her. Yeah. Right. So, so we started to live in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. but, but we broke up eventually. Ah. Yeah. And then, okay. so then one person... <laughs> this, this happens. <laughs> yeah, and then one person yeah. some wrote to me like, oh, so come visit Vancouver. Yeah, Canada, where oh. you live. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. And then, yeah. so, so I started to live in Vancouver after that. So, oh, yeah. Okay. How long did you live in Vancouver? I think nine months or 10 months. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, almost one year. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. So, Okay. And then uh -huh. I met a Korean guard there. So Right. So I moved to Korea. My goodness. <laughs> okay. So, so that, well, your that... Korean is very good. We we spoke okay. for your channel oh, yeah, yeah. and you were trying That's to right. engage me in Korean, but I've forgotten so much of my <laughs> Korean. I didn't hold up my end very uh -huh. well, but right. okay. Yes. How long did you live in Korea? Uh it's almost one year. But the uh -huh. the inter interesting thing is that you know I so first, I used English because my girlfriend spoke mm -hmm. English. But like right. after we broke up, so I had to live alone in Korea. Mm -hmm. So right. So I started, yeah. So I had to survive. Yeah, then right. so that's that's how I yeah managed to like yeah, master Korean. 
yeah, I acquired the language. Yeah, yeah your Korean is very good. And, and, and of course, if you're in Korea, people are going to speak to you in Korean. They assume right. you're you're Korean, right? Right. Right. Well, that mean. Mm. <laughs> mm. But it's like Pardon? you know, yeah. um, you know, it's like I still have like accent, but uh, right. it's. I, I was really surprised, you know, it's like learning Korean or acquiring Korean is really, really easy, you know, because right. the grammar is almost the same as Japanese. Right. And then so and, I... And half the vocabulary is, is right. recognizable too. Right, exactly. Yeah. So I was re so uh, yeah. like, so I, yeah, that was the first time I learned that, you know, it's like, oh, so you're it's like a people in Europe can speak English really fluently, fluently because of this. Right. So <laughs> of course, it's it's the of course it's a, it's a similar and vocabulary. I mean, uh, fifty percent. Like if you're an English speaker, you want to learn Spanish. Half right. the vocabulary is familiar to you. Right, right, right. So that's a tremendous advantage. Right. So that's for sure. Yeah, because like you know, when I was in Canada or. Uh, the United States, you know, sometimes the Europeans said to me, it's like, oh, you don't know this word? Oh, <laughs> like, the, and at that time, I was like, oh, my man. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. like, but it's like when I was in Korea, it's like, oh, makes sense. <laughs> of course, of course. Well, absolutely. <laughs> it's it's the Chinese vocabulary in, in both cases, Japanese and, and Korean. There's so much vocabulary from Chinese right but and that is like in Europe in European languages there's so much vocabulary that comes from Latin uh, yeah. that uh, people will recognize in different languages and use in different languages exactly so, uh, so it's like yeah so they, you know, yeah like I had yeah. it like a yeah, yeah, huge advantage you know over them absolutely. when I when I studied Korean so like, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely so Mm -hmm. So it's like I was able to. But you to, also speak to, French, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. So how did bit. you how did you transition cool. to French? I was like, man, French. So when when I was in Ko, so my mm -hmm. second yeah sec, yeah we had to study like second foreign language, and I chose mm -hmm. French. So that's why uh -huh. I chose. And then so I passed the entrance exam of Tokyo University, uh, mm -hmm. right? And I chose French. Yeah. So mm -hmm. so that's mm -hmm. why it's like I was able to read. Because the, the question was just right. a translation, so translate right. French into right. Japanese. So uh, mm -hmm. I was able to read, yeah, but that's... I just disregarded the pronunciation. So right. that's why that's why il est très yeah. très difficile de parler français. <laughs> bah non, c'est uh, manque de de d'occasion de, de parler là. Il sait ça. Il fait... right. To speak well, you have to speak a lot, and you have yeah. to be in a situation where you can speak a lot. Which was my situation when I lived in Japan. I was mm -hmm. speaking Japanese every day. Mm -hmm. But if you have that level of comprehension that you can read well, then uh, you know mm -hmm. very quickly. If you were to go to France for a few months, right. your level would, uh, mm -hmm. your pronunciation and your ability to produce the language would improve very quickly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, listen. Very interesting. So you have you've been a bit of a, a language roamer, adventurer, uh, yeah. uh, picking up languages here and there naturally, and at the same time studying, you know, cognitive science and linguistics. Yeah. And then you're applying all of that to helping uh, people in Japan do better on their tests, mm -hmm. uh, tests which are kind of a necessary evil. Uh, in Japan, <laughs> right. and and also at the same time, uh, a legitimate reason to learn the language because if you live in Japan, you don't really need English that much. Mm -hmm. But right. if you have to learn it for the exam, then you've got a reason. So it right. does serve that purpose of motivating people. Uh, exactly. Ideally, some people are so motivated by the language itself that they learn it. But maybe a majority of people need that extra mm -hmm. <laughs> nudge from having to write the test, and you help them. That, that's mm -hmm. good. And so, yeah, and the whole issue of, of, of language learning and cognitive science is something that I'm very interested in. Of mm -hmm. course, I talk to people about it uh, on my channel. And it's interesting to know that, that there are people in Japan, there are people, uh, you know, wherever, Korea, France, uh, Russia, who are, and as I know, because I've interacted with them. In fact, there was a polyglot conference in, mm -hmm. in Fukuoka. We oh. had people from, from Japan, from Indonesia, mm -hmm. from different countries, uh, Philippines. 
uh, you know, from Asia, different countries who are very interested in this subject. So it's a subject that has universal appeal. Yep. So it was fun to connect with a, uh, a soul brother uh, in Japan. Yeah. <laughs> not in Seoul, not in Seoul. In <laughs> soul, soul and, brother uh, in Seoul. Soul brother, yeah. <laughs> so uh, anything uh, that you would leave, uh, I, we do have, I do have uh, viewers on my channel mm -hmm. who are interested in Japanese. Right. I have viewers on my channel who are Japanese people who want to improve their English. Right. A any final thought you want to leave them with? Yeah, that's right. So it's like, yeah, for the Japanese people who study English, so please try to speak English. Like, don't be afraid of making mistakes. So it's like, Absolutely. yeah, in Japan, yeah, it's like even probably this video will be like that. So a lot of people, you know, write bad comments if somebody oh. speaks English. So that's like <laughs> terrible. Yeah, terrible. Yeah. I agree with you. And the yeah. same, same with, uh, and just to continue on that thought, mm -hmm. you are never going to be as comfortable in a foreign language as you are in your own. Right. So you pronounce your own language better. You use the words better. Uh, but the fact that you are able to communicate in another language, that's good. Mm -hmm. And to criticize people who don't hit the 100% perfect to me is 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 extremely bad right. don't criticize people don't correct them mm -hmm. just you know congratulate them on what they've been right. able to do and people should congratulate themselves mm -hmm. when they're able to communicate in exactly. another language similarly when we learn japanese if we don't have all the niceties of the politeness uh, in mm -hmm. japanese keigo or whatever don't right. worry about it I, I, I correct me if i'm wrong but you know no japanese person is offended Right. Uh, if yeah. you don't hit the perfect level of politeness, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to be respectful of people, uh, and, and common sense dictates how you know how one behaves respectfully. But Correct. you don't have to have the total one hundred percent kego mm -hmm. nailed down. You're not going to offend anyone exactly. in Japan. Yeah. And I think sometimes people get so wrapped up in this politeness and oh mm -hmm. geez if i say this i'll be offending someone you won't i, I lived there for nine years i never saw anyone get offended mm -hmm. because <laughs> someone had clumsy usage of japanese would you agree with that yeah sure no problem yeah it's like yeah. it's extremely okay. difficult for foreigners to learn honorific expressions in of japanese of course yeah. of course <laughs> it takes a lot of exposure it takes living in there living with people mm -hmm. experiencing it you can't read it up in a book and then get it right. Right, so. right. Okay. Okay. Tetsuya, thank you very much thank for you. visiting with me on my channel. Okay. Okay. Right. Please subscribe so, yeah. to my mata. channel too. Ja, mata. Yeah. Well, no, I'll put a link to your channel. The whole thing go in the description. Okay. Box. Yeah. Thank and you. come and subscribe to Tetsuya's channel, especially if you're a Japanese person working on your English and you're going to learn a lot of things that are useful. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.